Hi, I'm Dr. Johnson Haas, and welcome to GEOS 1900, Evolution of Life, a Geologic Perspective. This course is entirely on e-learning, and the first thing you should do is to go on to e-learning for this course and find the syllabus under contents, the first stuff on the course. Uh, after this intro video, you'll see that you, you have this syllabus. Read through that, because the first thing you're going to need to do is pass the syllabus activation quiz. The syllabus activation quiz is what it sounds like. It quizzes you on the content of the syllabus. And by doing that, it's making sure you understand what this course structure is about, what the grading structure is, what's expected of you, what you should expect of me, the dates of the midterm and the final, which are the two big dates you need to keep in mind, what the labs are and what their sequences are. You need to keep track of all this stuff, and so to make sure you can, first pass the syllabus activation quiz at 100%. There's an unlimited number of attempts. You can, you can take it any number of times, but you do have to pass it at 100%. And please don't email me if you've gotten everything but one question done. Can't I just have that? No, you can't. You can't. You have to actually do this to 100%. Um, and simply by looking at the syllabus, you can do that. Then you know what's going to go on for the rest of the term. So do that first, because that unlocks everything else. Once you pass that quiz, you can proceed with the course. So uh, please don't wait to do that. Uh, you should do that as soon as you can after watching this and reading the syllabus itself. It's a four credit course. It's fully online and fully asynchronous, meaning we're not going to have any real-time meetings. This course is essentially self-driven in that I lay out the system, the series of topics, and the assignments that you should progress through. But you're essentially up it's up to you to, to get this stuff done in a timely fashion. And if you read through the syllabus, which is the first thing you should do after watching this, uh, you should look through the syllabus to see how the course is put together and to see what's expected of you and what you can expect from me. So this is a fully asynchronous course. So let's talk really briefly. I want to introduce you to some of the structural aspects of the course, how it's put together. There's the two major dates that you need to know uh, for this course. That's the midterm date and the final date. I'm going to provide those in the syllabus, and that's around midterm, around the middle of the term, middle of the semester is the midterm, obviously. And the labs in this course are built around the structure of the midterm and the final. So what you're going to be graded on this course are those two exams, the midterm and the final, plus a series of labs. There are five labs that ideally you should complete before the midterm. And there are five labs after the midterm that you should complete before the final. The labs are one of the primary ways that you're going to interact with this course. They're all on e-learning. And the labs for this course progress you through a sequence of topics. That's also the sequence of topics I talk about in the lectures that are recorded for the course or the course materials that are available to you, uh, including some videos that I've made. So you should be thinking of this course as you should be reading the textbook, following along with the subjects in their sequence, and then making sure you do the labs and stay up to date with the labs. If you stay up to date with it, by the time you get to the midterm, you'll have completed lab five, and that will have prepped you, essentially, through studying by doing, although you should study beyond that, obviously. That should prep you, though, for the material that's going to be covered on the midterm. Just like that, after the midterm, you've got labs six through ten, and those labs cover topics that are on the schedule, going through those phases of the course, finishing up the last lab, which is about climate. And then after that, you have the final exam, which will cover all that stuff. And of course, is uh, also comprehensive to material that we covered before the midterm. All the labs in this course are on e-learning. They're fully on e-learning, although they have links to other sites off, off e-learning, uh, where you'll be going to do some exercises sometimes. The labs follow through the content of the course, like I said, uh, but they each have you do slightly different things. The labs for this course, Evolution of Life, are fully online. Um, they're all on e-learning, or at least that's the portal you go through to start the exercises, although many of the labs, uh, most of them take you out of e-learning off onto the web to look at a particular source of information or uh, an inform informative uh, sort of mini game that illustrates a particular point. The textbook for this course is History of Life, by Richard Cohen. Uh, the current edition, I think, is the sixth edition, but other editions previous would work just fine. I recommend this 
textbook highly. Uh, I essentially require it, but if you can't get access to one, uh, it is possible to essentially follow along in the lecture material by doing a lot of background legwork research yourself. For example, going through a lot of Wikipedia to get at some of the basic information for this stuff. That's why I recommend that you just get the textbook. Uh, the e-version, I think, is, should be the least expensive. Beyond that, there is no requirement for software that you have to purchase or other materials you have to purchase for evolution of life. However, like I said, in the labs, uh, you will be going to different locations and looking at different sites for information and for exercises that you'll find there. So it's pretty straightforward. Put the date for the midterm, put the date for the finals down on your calendars, put them on your Google calendars, put them on your physical calendars, however you want to do it, because those dates are the main ones you need to remember. The individual labs don't have due dates because this is fully online, I want you to work at your own pace, but we are hemmed in by the real calendar. And so you need to know that you need to get a certain distance into this course and do the labs to get to the midterm and do it well and then progress through. So the labs aren't going to close on you. Uh, there's no particular due dates for them except that I put in due dates for the first five labs being just before the midterm. And I put in the due date for the last five labs to be just before the final to sort of make sure you know where you are and you keep going. It's easy to get behind in an online class because you really are motivating yourself to do this. And I can provide you with all the information and I can provide you with a structure, but you have to push your way through this yourself. And so I'm going to be putting up some short videos throughout the semester, coaching you along or telling you where you should be at this point, uh, what you should have accomplished at this point and what the next stuff is going to be about. But it is pretty much self-driven. You have teaching assistants which are available and if you have questions about the labs while you're doing them, uh, you should contact your TA, ask anything you need. Uh, if there's a major problem, contact them or contact me. If it's a problem with e-learning itself or there's content on e-learning that you think you should be seeing but is not showing up, let me tell you, all the content is there. So if you're not seeing something that's an e-learning issue and you really should contact e-learning and contact the help desk and they will help you out. You can contact me if you want or the TA, but we're not the tech help. So we're just going to forward that to them and add more time it takes you to get your answer back. So for your own sake, uh, that's who you should go to for those problems. Otherwise, uh, contact me or the TA. So that should get you set up to get started with the course. Uh, I'd recommend, like I said, immediately going to read the syllabus. Get familiar with that so you can take and pass the syllabus activation quiz at 100%. And then start reading the first chapters in the book that are, that are noted on the syllabus to read. Uh, and, and I would say get started on lab one. Um, these labs are not timed and you can do them in multiple sessions. So if you have a tight schedule, if you have kids or something like that, you can always do these in segments. Save your answers a uh, section at a time or an answer at a time on e-learning. Uh, come back later and do more work to finish it. Uh, but if you get started now, you'll at least see what it's all about, the first one at least, and kind of get going with things. So uh, that should get you started and um, uh, I'll talk to you later on.